If you wanted to see a new bullet journal setup with minimal decoration, then you have come to the right place. Today we are setting up Vogel's journal for the year of 2023, but of course these ideas can be used for any year. Flipping into the first page though, and we are setting up a year at a glance, or effectively a page with all of the monthly calendars for the year ahead. You can see I'm doing some interesting ruler work here, and that's because this is the only decoration that these layouts are going to get. Vogel asked if he could have a Tron inspired theme for his starter journal setup. So we're going with a bunch of ruled lines rather than any kind of doodly or sticker or washi tape decoration. If you're wondering, wait, doesn't Vogel mean bird? Uh, yes, in some languages it does, but his name is technically Vaughn. I just call him Vogel, it's like a nickname, <laughs> but Vogel is my partner. I set him up his bullet journal for this year, and originally he was going to be moving into a pre-printed planner for the year ahead. But after really enjoying his October and November setups in particular, he asked me if I'd make him another one. The notebook that we're using for his journal is a Kumar Stationery and Crafts notebook. I do have a review of that one on my channel, it is a great notebook option. And if you wanted to grab yourself one, you can use my code JASHY10 for 10% off your order. We love savings. In terms of the mini calendars we have on this layout though, those are just printed onto a regular piece of paper, and I'm sticking them in with double-sided tape. I have gone and highlighted the last column in each of the calendars, just with a little stripe of blue. Blue is Vogel's favourite colour, and it ties in nicely with the Tron theme. But this year at a glance printable is actually a freebie that you can grab in the description box below. It has 144 different options for the calendar, depending on whether you like a Sunday start or a Monday start, whether you want a black background or a white background, a whole bunch of different options. Sticking those in here though, I do appreciate that having printable mini calendars just makes the whole year at a glance process much faster. No need to give myself a hand cramp and a half trying to write out all of those little numbers, though I do also like the way that a handwritten calendar looks. The contrast of the white text on the black background here though, that makes me happy. For our headers, we are going in first with a Tombow jaw brush marker, this one's in the colour 452, but as usual all of the equipment we're using is linked in the description box. The lettering style is fairly simple, really just a variation of a simple all cap style. Some of the letters have small breaks in them, for instance the F, E and B that I've got for February, whereas other letters like the S for September and the A that I've used, those ones are a little bit different. To give those letters a little bit more definition though, I do outline them with my Muji gel pen in the 0.38 size. This choice did certainly add to the time taken, but I think it makes the letters stand out a lot better. In terms of timing, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this year at a glance took about 26 minutes. If you're new here, you may not know, but one of the things that I like to do in these setup videos is tell you guys how long it takes to do the setup. It can be a little bit hard to tell from the time lapsing, and I want you to have realistic expectations about how long things actually take me. If this is your first time here, welcome, it is a pleasure having you here. My name is Jess, or Jashi Karen. As you can probably tell, I make videos about bullet journaling, and my aim is to give you the biggest range of bullet journaling ideas. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, make sure that you stick around and join our team by hitting the subscribe button. Flipping on over though, and we are getting into the future log. This is a layout that we didn't actually include in Vogel's bullet journal from this year, mainly because he said he didn't want anything at the start of his journal outside of the year at a glance, but he did find that as he used the journal, he realistically would have liked to have a place to write future events down. This future log is a simple layout, so we have six months per page, three along the top, three along the bottom for each of those, and again we're using line work to add a small touch of decoration. You'll see that I do indeed make good use of my ruler in this setup. While I could have freehanded the lines and saved myself some time, I really wanted them to be super straight to tie in with our theme. You know those kind of like vector images of networks and stuff? That's kind of what I was going for here. You may also have noted that anywhere the lines end, because I don't draw a lot of closed boxes in this setup, I've finished those lines off with a little dot, which is another thing that you see in a lot of those network vector pictures. To make sure that all of the pages of the setup were cohesive, I've done repeated elements like the line work, and also the headers are all the same for all of the pages. So first going in with the Tombow to do that kind of simple, slightly altered all caps lettering, and then eventually I'll go around the outside with that 0.38 Muji pen. Another thing that I am super into at the moment is highlighting every second line when writing out a list. I wanted to use this to bring a little bit more blue into the pages, so I'm using the Paler Blue 491 Tombow Dual Brush Marker to highlight every second line in those boxes for each month. Not only decorative, this can also be helpful to distinguish between separate entries on a list. So for the future log, that'll be separate events. 
Coming into the outlining stage though, you know in some videos where people say, "Oh, I forgot where my camera was and my head accidentally got into the shot? Well, there was absolutely no accident here. My head being here was completely intentional because I just needed to be a lot closer to my journal to make sure that that outlining was nice and tight. When you're doing your journaling, always make sure that you position yourself in a way that actually lets you do the things that you want to do as easily as possible. When I journal, I'm constantly rotating my notebook, bringing it closer to me, holding my arm in specific positions or directions. There's no point in trying to make things harder than they have to be. In terms of timing though, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, the future log took about 21 minutes, but this doesn't include idea generation time or sketching in time. Flipping over and we're on to what we could effectively call Vogel's goal spread, but this has two separate pages. On the left we have a 23 in 2023, and on the right we're going to have a recipes to try list. In terms of 23 in 2023, this is pretty much what it sounds like. So 23 things that Vogel wants to accomplish in the year ahead. They don't have to be big things, they might be smaller things, but it's just a place for him to outline the stuff that he wants to get done. In terms of the recipes to try, you might not think of this as a goals page in particular, but Vogel really enjoys cooking, he really likes trying new recipes, he has quite an extensive list of the ones he wants to give a go, so I thought that having a place for those in his journal would be a good idea. Depending on how he wants to use it, he may also want to put in some little ratings to say how much he enjoyed the meals. In terms of our 23 in 2023 page though, this one is the most decorative layout that we have in this setup. But again, it is just a whole bunch of line ruling. Our decoration here is mainly concentrated in that bottom right corner, mainly just as a way to fill some space, because 23 isn't a super nice number to put down on a page in terms of spaces to write out things you want to get done. So on this page, I have three columns for those 23 things. The first column has 10 items, the second has seven, and the last has five. Having them finish on that kind of diagonal angle meant that I could use the bottom right corner to put in some of that line work. As we talked about before, all of those lines are capped off with those little dots, and I think it ended up looking really good. The 23 in 2023 layout took about 18 and a half minutes to set up, and that time was certainly increased by the amount of line ruling I was doing. But one of the ways I helped speed myself up was when it came to the coloring in. You can see here I've got some washi tape, and you might be thinking, Jess, didn't you say we weren't using any washi tape or stickers in this setup? These pieces of tape will not be staying here, I'm just using them to mask the page while I colour in each of those boxes for the 23 things. This is a really nice and easy way to get crisp lines of colour. Technically speaking, I don't need them for this reason because I do actually have outlines on these boxes, but it did help me colour in the boxes faster because I don't need to be careful about going outside of the lines as the page is protected in those areas. This is honestly one of my favourite ways to use washi tape in my journal, which is possibly kind of sad, but I do find it to be a very helpful trick. On to the recipes to try page now though, and we're going in first with our ruler to do our border. On this one we have much less decoration because I wanted to maximise the space that Vogel has available to write in those recipes. I've set this one up so that it has two columns, so either a space for Vogel to write the recipe he wants to try and then a rating for the recipe, or if he has quite a lot of recipes that he wants to give a go, he can use both of those columns to write those in. Again, I just used that light blue Tombow 491 to highlight every second line and also just as a way to mark in where those two columns were. Being as simple as it was, this one only took about seven and a half minutes from first touch of the pen to final erasings. Flipping over and we're onto another start of journal layout, though this one kind of just looks like it's a weekly spread, this one's actually a place for Vogel to write out his weekly routines. So what kind of tasks does he want to do consistently on a Monday, on a Tuesday, etc. Of course there are 8 boxes on this one, so that last one in the bottom right corner is for weekly plans, or things that he wants to do once a week but they don't necessarily have to happen on the same day each week. This may seem like an odd placement for what is effectively the header of the page, but when it comes to the weekly spreads in Vogel's journal, this layout effectively mimics that, and he typically likes to have the Monday be the top left box. The one on the bottom right is usually used for notes. I figured that having the boxes in the same place on this layout, compared to the weekly spreads, means that he's less likely to get confused about what's happening on what day. Especially because this is going to be a reference page for each of those weeklies, so having them set up in the same way just makes sense. This one came in at about 18 minutes from first touch of the pen to final erasings, and now we're flipping back to the nameplate page. I know that a lot of people like to put their name in the journal first, 
They treat it like that's the official starting of the notebook. Personally, I don't like to start with it because I'm always worried that I'm going to stuff something up. And no, I don't mean I'm going to spell my name wrong, though, I mean, it could happen. But more so, I just get a bit anxious that that first page is going to be the one that I make the error on, so I'd rather ease myself into the setup by setting up the other pages first. With Vogel's name in the journal, though, we can flip through what we've set up today. As promised, this one is a nice simple setup, but if you are on the hunt for more simple journal inspiration, the playlist at the top is worth checking out, or if you just wanted new journal inspiration in particular, the playlist at the bottom is where it's at. I'll see you over there.